Welcome to the Solopreneur Live podcast. I'm your host, Catherine Aragon, and today I'm talking to David Perez. David is an expert in podcasts, and he's been running his own business for four years. So I am excited to have him on the podcast. Our mission at Solopreneur Life is to help you build a business and life you love. Your vision, your goals, your terms. In our interview episodes, we look at how other business owners have built their dream business. So take a moment now to subscribe to the Solopreneur Live podcast so you won't miss a single episode. Welcome to the Solopreneur Live podcast. I am your host, Catherine Aragon. Learn what it takes to build and scale your own business so you can enjoy the freedom and flexibility that comes with the Solopreneur Live. Today I have with me guest David Perez, and I'm so excited to be able to have him. He has already been with me on the Authority Journey podcast. If you've ever gone and listened to that, I hope you will do that. Um, But he's coming back today to talk about being a solopreneur. How do you build your business and how he got his start and tips he may have for you. So David, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Catherine. It's a pleasure. Um, So let's just dig in. Um, You know, tell us first a little bit about yourself. Okay. um, I live in Colombia in a city where it's always hot and humid and sunny, uh, like all year round. Like we don't have seasons here, so it's always hot. It's lovely. It's lovely. Like you can go to the park anytime. Uh, but sometimes the, the, sometimes the heat is desperating, but it's nice. I like it. Uh, I have a background in education. I, w- I not always was involved with marketing or content marketing or podcasting. I, I used to be a teacher. Uh, and, and through my process as a teacher, uh, I ended up being a podcast producer. There is a connection there, even though it, like they sound like two different things. Th- there is a connection there, actually. Okay, cool. So tell us a little bit more about those early days. What made you quit to go quit teaching to do your own thing? Okay, um, being a teacher is probably one of the most rewarding experiences I've, I've ever had in my life. Like working with my students, I work with students from like many different levels since elementary school, high school, uh, vocational school, and even university. It was great. However, uh, the contracts, like when, when it comes to the contracts, they are like crappy, so like so super crappy. Even though like you're working at a nice university, still the contracts are like four months of, or so, like three months, four months. So um, it's not it's not the best thing to do if you're like projecting yourself in the long term with like like such short term contracts. So uh, I started uh, back when I was a teacher. I started a uh, podcast production as a side gig, and eventually I started getting more referrals and more clients. And there was a there was a point where I found out that I was making probably as much money in my side gig as in my actual quote unquote uh, job as a teacher, mm-hmm. so I decided to leave it and 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 just like pursue something that had um, like that didn't have a roof because that, that's the thing as a teacher. And I don't know in like probably in other prof- in other professions it happens as well, but as a teacher. You, you reach a ceiling very quickly, like no matter how much you study or how much you do, like there is a, you're going to reach that ceiling very quick about how much you're going to be making and how high you can scale up in the in the ladder. That is one of my favorite things about being a solopreneur is anytime you're at a job and it doesn't matter what that job is, there is some kind of a cap on what you can yeah. earn. Like you're talking about, it's the ceiling. Yeah. And um, I like the way you say it something that doesn't have a roof, that you can just go as high as you want. My husband says of me, he says, he doesn't worry about our finances. He says, you can create money anytime we need it. Yeah. And that's such a valuable skill. So how did you first discover that you were at that point where your podcast was earning more than your teaching? Um, well, one of one of them was uh, one of the reasons or one of the ways I found out was, of course, checking the the. Um, the income levels, like the, I was comparing, okay, this is my my income here and this is my income over here. So I they, they were pretty equal. And there was a point where I had to hire somebody to help me out. Like I had so many clients and such an amount of work that I needed to to rent a, um, 
to rent an office and to hire somebody. So this is where yeah. I realized, okay, this is going to be something bigger than I expected. And, and yeah, like, this is what I want to, this is what I want to keep doing. Like, That's for, amazing. To come. So, so you, how did you do that? I mean, you're teaching full time, right? Yes. How did you get so many clients that you couldn't manage it by yourself? Were you doing a lot of marketing? No, actually, it was very organic. Uh, I was, in, and it was crazy because I was a, a full time teacher at one, at one place, a part time teacher in a different place. I, I was a new dad, so like new oh, dads wow. will understand that like, you have to work three times as hard to to like make the ends meet. Um, and then I started uh, editing podcasts for other people, and there was a point where referrals will start coming by like people will start referring friends or like colleagues or people in the same industry and i will start getting a lot of referrals that's where it started growing like i didn't do any marketing i didn't do any like ads or anything like that no i, I the only thing i did was being very like trying to give my best always like not all just deliver yes. a finalized product but build a good relationship with my client and try to always give like go the extra mile always like they needed something but they, i always gave a little bit more so they were that. they were very pleased about that and that's why they kept recommending their friends and other people in like in the in their network wonderful i love hearing that because i feel like no matter what work i'm doing my name is on it mm -hmm. even if you don't see my name on it if i yeah. am the contractor i need to put my best work into it so you know, how, what would you say to other people about that, about this work ethic? Okay. Uh, and, and I've, I've already thought about this. Like, it doesn't matter if you're an employee or if you're a solopreneur or an entrepreneur or whatever tag you want to add to it. It doesn't matter where you work or who you work for. You have to always give your best. You have to always give the best of you. Not because uh, it's going to guarantee that you're going to get a better contract or a contract renewal. It, like many times it is not even relevant for that. It's because it helps you grow. Like if you don't give your best, you're going to be mediocre. Mm -hmm. the, if you give your best, like you're going to constantly uh, be developing new skills, new knowledge. If you like dare yourself to face new challenges all the time and always do the best you can, you're going to continue improving as a professional. So even if you're working for like uh, as an employee, if they let you go, which might happen even if you're the best of the best, you can then apply for another position at a different company, but maybe for a higher position because like the all the skills and knowledge you have developed because you have been demanding that from yourself are going to get you there. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a, it's an exercise of constant improvement. Okay, you don't do it for your employer. You don't do it for your the business. If you're working for somebody else, of course they are gonna benefit from that because if you do your best, they're gonna like they're gonna get all the benefits of that. But you do it as an exercise of constant improvement. I love that. Such a great answer to that question. Okay, now let's tap into podcasts because mm -hmm. that is your expertise, and yeah. you've worked. How many people have you worked with? helping them with podcasts? Uh, how many clients? I don't know, dozens. Like We have produced over uh, maybe near uh, 2,000 episodes for clients about that. Wow. Yeah. that's imp So let's say we're talking to solopreneurs in yes. this, so people who are just starting their own business, or maybe they're established, but they're committed to working alone. Yes. What is the value of having a podcast? Okay. Um, you need something like you, you need something like your business card, but your business card is not enough. Like you need something that supports that business card that gives it some weight. Uh, a way to, to do that is by building a podcast through a podcast. You're going to be able to one network with people in your industry. So you are not like a stranger or somebody who is unknown. You are like a secret in the industry. No, you become somebody like somebody who is part of that network. And the other is you start building authority and trust. Mm. And this is very important because as, a, as an entrepreneur or a solopreneur, people need to believe in what you do so they buy your products and services. Like there is no way for you. And this is something very common I see, for example, people who want to sell courses, online courses, and then they wonder, no, they, they say, oh, nobody's buying my courses. I don't know why. Like, do they know you? 
they don't know you even, even if they do they don't know the, like your expertise they don't know how much you know about the topic they don't know what what approach you take to the, to the topic so that way a podcast is a way for you to showcase what you know what perspectives you have on that and and, and how you can help the people who are likely to work with you that's so great so let's say okay someone has said great i'm in i accept the challenge i will start a podcast what would yeah. you say to them to get started okay i think first is a mindset thing the technical stuff is easy like what we do for clients is like taking care of the technical stuff and believe me it's, it's time consuming it's very time consuming but it's easy the key thing here catherine is the mindset if a client comes at me and they tell me okay when i start a podcast and start making revenue after three weeks <laughs> I'm going to say, no, you're crazy. Like, I, I, I cannot promise anything like that. I'm, I will be like lying to you. Uh, so the mindset is program yourself for the long term. You yeah. got to be consistent and you got to think of the long term, because if you are short term minded, you're going to leave the like you're going to drop out after a couple of months. And you're going to think, oh, a podcast is it's not good for me or it's not good for businesses. It's because you, you don't have uh, the, the proper mind, mindset for podcasting. So first of all, get in the right mindset, plan for the long term. The second thing I will say is get yourself out of the formula because some people think, oh, I, I, I like this. I think this is going to be important. So I'm going to talk about this. No, you should not think like about yourself. You got to think about your audience. You need to do the research, do your homework, talk to people do interviews, go online, check the comment sections in like uh, uh, social media and see what people's needs are. Okay. Because many times what we think they are care about is not what they actually care about. So you're and, looking, Oh, let me interrupt real quick right there. I love what you're talking about. So finding out what they res what they're responding to, mm -hmm. you're just looking at the comments on the podcast or what? Uh, it's a way, it's a way. It's something we do, for example, for, for uh, planning out our content topics for our episodes is we go uh, on social media accounts or uh, of other creators in the industry and we check all the comments and all the interactions that are there. So from that, we can observe what questions people have, what challenges they have, what achievements they have uh, made. And we take those and we create topics for our episodes from that. I so for see. example, a common topic is... Uh, let me see. Um, okay, video podcasting, for example, like should I start a video podcast or an audio only podcast? So that, that's something that is a common question in the comment section. Or um, how much an ad should be or how long should podcast episodes be? Or how long should I wait before it gets, it gets me any revenue? So those are common questions on those uh, comment sections. We collect them and we create uh, new episodes around that. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Now, I interrupted you before. Can you find that train again? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so uh, I was talking about the mindset side of it. So okay. first part is think long term. Second part is audience goes first. You get it. You got to get yourself out of the formula. And, and then the third part is the technical side, which is, uh, is simple yet time consuming. So that's why um, I recommend you to get help here. Uh, same with other areas, and I'm going to address that in a second. So uh, for the technical side, I always recommend to get a microphone, okay? Even even like many people get nice quality audio from uh, ear pods or built-in mics, that's good. But it's better like if you're projecting for the long term to get an actual microphone, that's going to give you better quality audio. And it's going to be useful if you're going to be like on uh, webinars or live events or anything else. I mean, they're multi-purpose, so they're always going to be bit there. They're easy to use. There are some of them that are USB. So just plug and play and use them like no extra knowledge needed. And yeah, I think that's pretty much everything you need. The right mindset and the right equipment. Okay. And really the equipment, I mean... It's audio. We're using Zoom for this recording, but all you need is a microphone. Yeah. Because you're not necessarily doing video to go with. Now, yeah. let let me ask you about this. I've done a little bit of research, and it looks like podcasts or video podcasts perform very well on YouTube. Have you gone in that direction? Uh, I have not recorded video podcasts myself, but I do rec uh, I do process uh, content for YouTube for my clients. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And we've noticed that what works well is not the full episodes, but clips. Okay. Like uh, one minute clips, three, five minute clips that address a specific, very, very particular topic or area or question. Those work very well. Now, if you're going to be put, putting a 40 minute or 60 minute pieces of content out there, it's very likely that it will not perform as well. Because video usually is uh, like the, the attention span on video is like three to five minutes tops. You have exceptions, of course, like Joe Rogan, like he has like three hour episodes or other podcasts like that, that can be like uh, between one and three hours and people will listen to or like we, they will watch the whole thing. But these are exceptions. Like okay. we are not Joe Rogan you're, or we are not this. So you're recommending... Um the audio file goes in your podcast and then just small clips for yeah. YouTube. Okay. Yeah, Do yeah. you feel like it needs to be the head, to the talking head video, or can it just be one of those audio graphics on YouTube? I think um, the talking head creates a little bit more rapport. So mm -hmm. it depends on how long the clip is going to be. And there are technical aspects involved, you know, like we, we, we've recorded podcasts before, like sometimes you record a video and then the video gets messed up. So like you get the, only the audio and you lose the video. So you have to work with what you have. Uh, recording video entails some technical challenges. So it depends on uh, like what, what equipment you have, what resources you have and how lucky you are. Because sometimes even though you have everything set up properly, yeah, I don't know, technology will just kick you in the butt. It, and, and you, won't it? Yeah, <laughs> it happens. It happens even to pros. We love it and we hate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we love it and hate it. Uh, but I do recommend, like, if you if you're comfortable with recording video, and if your guest is comfortable with recording video, video is a very good way for creating clips, mm -hmm. for promoting your show on different channels. Like uh, we are doing, for example, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. We are extracting short clips, promoting the podcast there. Wonderful. So now we've gone, we've started at the beginning. We decided, yes, we're doing this. We figured out how to get started. I love that you, you comment on uh, the long haul and you already talked a little bit about getting topics. Do you have anything more to add about, you know, how to, let's say you're in a topic or you're in an industry where everybody and their dog is doing a podcast. Mm -hmm. How do you stand out? Okay, uh, this is this is a, a simple yet hard question because uh, I think the, the first piece of the answer will be find a niche. That's going to okay. be it. Find a niche. Find a group of people who you can help best, okay, uh, and who you can get to know as, as well as you can. So you can adapt your knowledge and skills to their very particular needs and wants. So this is going to be very important. Um, and create content that addresses that. Like you have to be laser focused in that part. Create content that addresses those very particular needs and wants. The other thing is uh, you gotta be consistent. Actually, many of the podcasts that are out there, like they they go live and they go like through the third, fifth episode, luckily up to their tenth episode, and then disappear. A lot of people creating podcasts just just do it for a few episodes, and then they fade out. So consistency is very important here and thinking of the long term as well is going to be key. And I think not like it's crazy to be stressed about like this, a lot of podcasts out there or like a lot of blogs out there or a lot of YouTube channels out there. Like there is always going to be saturation. If people find out a content channel is working, everybody's going to jump on there. But still, they're going to continue getting business from that. So I think that should not be an issue to, to care about. Uh, you should care about like yourself, what you're doing, connecting with your with the audience the best you can and trying to provide the most value because like there are always going to be competitors, always, no matter what niche or what industry you're in. That is such good advice. Um, now, what is the number one biggest mistake that you have seen with podcasts? Oh, that one's easy. Excuse me. That one's easy. That one's easy. Okay. Uh, being too broad or too general. Really? Yes. Yes. That's a common mistake. Uh, for example, like if you're creating content for, for businesses, like we are speaking about podcasts for businesses, not podcasting as a hobby, but for a business, 
You should be addressing your potential listeners or clients' particular needs and wants or challenges. So a podcast interview is not just a random conversation between two friends. Like you're going to be talking about, I don't know, you start with politics and then you move into going for a pizza and then you jump onto the latest movie. It's not like that. A very common mistake is people not being focused enough on the topics, not being clear enough about the topics that they are talking about in their episodes. And it's something you can see, for example, and this is a very common mistake, on podcast episode titles. Like the title is the first hook you're going to get for, to get the, the listener's attention. If the title goes like, uh, interview with Mr. John Smith, that's it. It says nothing. It says nothing about what you're talking about, who it is for, and how the person might benefit from that content. You have no idea if it's going to be worth your time to listen to that. So you might just skip it. So yes, be super laser focused in terms of the content you are recording, like what the conversation is going to be about. Plan it out, map it out. Probably you might, you might, you might want to use bullet points to stay on track. And with the titles and show notes, also try to be as razor sharp as, as, as possible so people know what they're going to listen and they're hooked to it before they even click play. That sounds great. Yeah, so I like that idea of, of finding your focus. So yeah. many times, you know, as content creators, we're just, well, I have a random idea. I feel like I should talk about this or this is my passion. I want to talk about this. Yeah. So being able to identify what your audience cares about and then hone in on that. Mm -hmm. um, there's something I once heard someone say, don't go broad, go deep. Yeah. 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 Totally. 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 And, and uh, as you say, think about your audience. I've had, I have a co-host in the show, so it's good because uh, like sometimes you think you're right, but then, then they, they prove you like, okay, no, you're, you're not on the right track here. Uh, so there's been situations when I say, oh, maybe we, we can interview this person or maybe we can cover this topic, but I don't think that's so relevant. And then he comes back and then he comes by and he tells me it's not relevant to you, but think about this. Think about this. Is it relevant to their audience? Is it relevant to our audience? Mm -hmm. And then I go, okay, crap, you're right. It's not relevant to me. I'm thinking about myself here. Yeah, it is relevant to the audience, actually. So we go ahead and record that episode. That's really, I find my husband edits many of my videos for me. And I love having that extra set of eyes on what I've said. Mm -hmm. Just like you're saying, some of it, it's, is it relevant? Others like, am I being stupid? But, <laughs> but it's just so helpful to have another person talking to you. Yeah. Um, I find myself, you know, let's go back to being a solopreneur as a solopreneur. That's one of our biggest challenges is, and you know, I know you're not a solopreneur at this moment, but one mm -hmm. day you were, how did you handle that when it was just you trying to come up with all these ideas by yourself and not having somebody there to say, yes, that's relevant or no, that isn't. Uh, it was, it was very stressful. It was crazy. I remember I worked like 12 hours a day, 12 to 14 hours a day. Um, and it was costing me my health my physical health and my mental health. So, so I had to change a lot of things. I was doing everything on my own. I was like, I, I, I would set up the website. I was doing uh, a lot of the editing. I was like doing the, the tech, the, the tech support because if a computer broke or like the software wasn't working, so I had to jump in and fix everything and then do the client, uh, the customer service thing. I had to do everything and it was crazy. Um, I think at the moment it helped that it, I didn't have so many clients. So probably that like the, the business hadn't grown so much uh, for me to like, even though I was wearing many hats, uh, I was still able to, to perform not at my best, but still able to perform. But eventually I learned that, um, I needed support. I needed support. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you need to take a break or there are things you don't know, or like, if you want to learn how to do them, it will take you months before you are um, skilled enough to, to execute on them. So eventually, yeah, you do need support. So making that transition, uh, that first person who you, you pulled in to, to be part of your team to help you get everything done, was that a difficult transition? No, it was a relief, actually. It was really? a relief because uh, I was stressed out about not being able to 
to accomplish or to to provide all the or deliver uh, on on the deadlines it was a relief at the beginning there is a uh, a painful process though which is the the fact that letting go because sometimes you think that you, like nobody else can do things as well as you can so you are afraid of letting go or you are was any micromanaging so like that that used to be <laughs> something very common and and like this dude he Sebastian is his name he's my co-host now he, hey you gotta chill out you gotta take it easy you have to stop micromanaging you already provided the instructions you provided the training so let me take care of it uh and and, and the other thing is from this process like being aware that even if people execute on your instructions what they do is not exactly the same thing you have in mind because they are not you things That's are going to feel a little bit different things are going to look and be a little bit different and that's okay like if you want them to be exactly as you wish you got to do it yourself and you're going to go crazy so yeah letting go letting go uh and, and like handling control was a little bit painful but you learn to do it and you have to do it otherwise mm -hmm. there is no way for, like there is no space for growth that is probably the best advice i've ever heard I love this idea. I mean, and I've experienced it myself. When I call in somebody to help me, it's there that little chunk of the of the work looks like yeah. that person, not like me. Yes. But if you think about building a business that's truly valuable, it shouldn't be one person. Yes. Um, even though we're solopreneurs, and yes, it's ours we could grow something that's so valuable other people want to buy it if we can extract ourselves just a little bit from that business yes to where we work on the business not necessarily in the business so you know i think your advice on letting go and letting other people bring themselves into the business is such good advice yes i think sometimes the solopreneur term uh doesn't quite work like doesn't work quite right quite right with the mindset uh being a solopreneur is not that you have to do everything on your own alone yourself like no it's like you are leading and you can get other people on board to work with you for particular needs and projects you have which might be temporary it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you have to do it uh, like you have to do everything on your own and this is a common mistake I've noticed with some clients, like they want to do the editing of, of the podcasts themselves and they want to do the promotion themselves and they want to run the Facebook ads themselves and they want to do everything on their own because they're solopreneurs, but mm -hmm. you're not expert on everything. You're, you're an expert in your area and it's important to get, um, to get a support network, okay? I, I think of it not like, like you're not going to be hiring uh, employees because like that, they, like your business structure is not designed like that but you're gonna uh, what's what's the term for that like strategic alliances mm. you're gonna get people that 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 are experts in areas that will support you and help your business grow mm. such good advice so now let's wind it up with one last question yep. what are you most proud of oh my god okay uh <laughs> there, there are there are several things uh, I think uh, the first one is uh, I, I've, I've been able to start and run a business for uh, uh, almost four years now, a successful business. So I've been able to do a lot of, thing, of things and help a lot of people. And I never thought I would be able to do it because I was raised to be an employee. Like my parents had, had the mindset of you got to go to university and then find a stable job and work there for 50 years until the day you retire or die. Uh, but I mean, that was true back in the 80s, but it's not true anymore. So I'm glad about that. And on the other side, uh, I'm a dad, so I think I have that kind of fatherly instinct. Uh, I've been able to hire a nice team and uh, several of my uh, the people I work with are very young people. They are still university students. And I'm glad to see that this work or this job they have, uh, what they do with me has helped them grow as people, as professionals and yeah has helped them change their mindset around many things that's wonderful david thank you so much for being with me today and sharing your expertise um if anybody listening wants to reach out to you where th where can they find you okay if you have any questions or doubts or anything you want to know about podcasts you can reach out to me at david at audiencecoach.com 
And if you, ah, oh, there is also the podcast. We have a podcast, of course, everywhere where you listen to podcasts, uh, Spotify, iTunes, Teacher, or whatever, you go and find us there, the Audience Coach Podcast. Thank you so much, David. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcast and visit us at solopreneurlife.com. Now, during this episode, David talked a lot about how it's difficult to run your business by yourself. You simply need other people who have expertise you don't have or who you can bounce ideas off of. If that's what you're looking for, you need the hub. At Solopreneur Life, our community of solopreneurs are there to support one another. You get training, you get monthly meetups, and our exclusive Slack group. So join us next week for another smart episode of the Solopreneur Life podcast and check out the hub. You'll find that at solopreneurlife.com slash join hub.